Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can I get a roll call? Ms. Smith? Here. Mr. Mew in there? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Supervisor Williams? Here. All right, first on tonight's agenda is a public hearing on the Comcast cable agreement. Uh, the cable agreement, I'll let the councilor read the notice. Okay. Uh, John Patterson, notice of public hearing. Renewal of a cable franchise agreement between Comcast of New York, LLC, and the town of Patterson. Public notice is hereby given that the town board of the town of Patterson, New York, will hold a public hearing held to consider the renewal of the cable television franchise agreement with Comcast of New York at the town offices 1142 Route 311, Patterson, New York, on October 9, 2024, at 7 p.m. in the evening of that day, or as soon thereafter as may be held, at which time all persons interested therein shall be heard. The town board will make every effort to assure that the hearing is accessible to persons with disabilities. Anyone requiring special assistance and or reasonable accommodations should contact the town clerk. A copy of the proposed franchise agreement is viewable at the town's website at http www.pattersonnewyork.org or in the office of the town clerk. Dated September 17th, 2024, by order of the town board of the town of Patterson, Donna Ramos, town clerk. Thank you. Uh, the Comcast franchise agreement with the town of Patterson comes up periodically. Uh, the last time I think was 15 years ago. Uh, there have been some minor modifications that the board's requested to the current agreement. There's no change in fees. Uh, there's no change in revenue coming in because that would just go back onto the taxpayers. Um, we're only doing a 10 year contract, I believe, here. Um, <coughs> And basically, it's the same agreement, so we can keep our service in, in the town of Patterson. Anybody have any questions? You can approach the mic and ask your questions or make your comments. Um, actually, Rich, I was going to ask, does, if we engage in this contract, that doesn't prevent a Verizon or bio or It is or a non-exclusive contract. Okay. Yep. Motion to close the public hearing. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Excuse me? Well, we didn't get that far. Okay. Okay. Probably do you want to see if there's any comment? We can always. Councilor, can you read the public hearing for the second public? Certainly. Uh, public notice for the second public hearing. Town of Patterson, notice of hearing, special district's assessment role and estimate of expenses and revenues. Public notice is hereby given. That special district's assessment role and the annual assessment of expenses and revenues for special districts has been prepared and is available for review at the Office of the Assessor at Town Hall, 1142 Route 311, Patterson, New York. Pursuant to Town Law Section 202-A, the Town Board of the Town of Patterson, New York, will hold a public hearing on the aforesaid special district's assessment role and the annual estimate of expenses and revenues at the town offices, 1142 Route 311, Patterson, New York, on October 9th, 2024, at 7 p.m. in the evening of that day, or as soon thereafter as may be held, at which time all persons interested therein shall be heard. The town board will make every effort to assure that the hearing is accessible to persons with disabilities. Anyone requiring special assistance and or reasonable accommodations should contact the town clerk, dated September 17th, 2024, by order of the town board of the town of Patterson, Donna Ramos, town clerk. So the town has a number of special districts, including a couple of lighting districts, uh, three water districts, a sewer district, um, recreation districts, park districts. And every year state law requires us to create a special role and publish it so everybody can review to see if you are supposed to be on the on the uh, within the confines of the special district or you know people may be included in that shouldn't be included in it gives everybody an opportunity to look at that and that's what we're doing here we're also um, we have a budget set up for the special districts there'll be a second chance for everybody to take a look at that as far as what you know things may cost you within your taxes um, having 
tried to explain that as best I can. We'll open it up to public hearing to anybody in the audience here who wishes to make any comment or ask any questions on the special district's assessment role. Hearing none, we'll turn to our audience joining us by Zoom. If anybody joining us by Zoom has any questions or comments on the special assessment role, if you would unmute, state your name. Motion to close the public hearing. We second. have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Reports. Uh, Who's doing reports? I am. Uh, I would like to make a motion to accept the following reports. Code Compliance, September 2024. Dog Enforcement, September 2024. And ECI, September 2024. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Supervisor's report. Motion to uh, approve the uh, supervisor's reports report for September 2024. So moved. Second. Aye. Oh, sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, motion to accept the uh, minutes for the town board minutes September 11th, 2024. Town board minutes September 25th, 2024. Um, generator bid uh, September 2024. And this is just announcing that this is out to bid. What have we received the bids? No, that is a minutes from the bid opening for okay. the Dorset Hall. Uh, motion to also approve the minutes from the opening of the bids for Dorset Hollow uh, water extension bid, October 3rd, 2024. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have some bills to audit here. Sure. Um, we actually have a revision for abstract number 18 dated September 27, 2024 in the amount of $346,423.42. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we have some budget transfers. Yes, we do. Um, we have budget adjustment request <clears throat> number 28, dated October 9th, 2024, regarding the general fund. The following budget adjustment is requested to allocate additional funds to the other co contractual account for the East of Hudson watershed funding years 11 through 15. Like to make an increase to the revenue account, $8,100, and an increase to the expense account, $8,100. I make a motion to approve budget adjustment request number 28 for 2024, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have uh, budget transfer request number 29, effective October 9th, 2024. The following budget transfer is necessary to reallocate funds for several employee benefits accounts and club court utilities for the general fund for increased costs. We will be taking from Parks Contractual, $130, from Hospital and Medical Insurance, $9,461, and we are increasing Parks Contractual Utilities, $130, Employee Benefits State Retirement, $8,900, and Employee Benefits Disability Insurance, $561. I'll make a motion to approve budget transfer request number 29 for 2024. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the uh, last budget transfer request, number 30, effective date October 9, 2024. This budget transfer is necessary to reallocate funds for the Employee Benefits State Retirement Account and Park Utilities for increased costs. We will be taking this from the Employee Benefits Social Security, $750. We'll be increasing Park Utilities, $550, and Employee Benefits State Retirement, $200. I'll make a motion to approve budget transfer request, number 30, for 2024. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm up. Peter, you're up. Uh, my first on my agenda is the uh, we received, uh, the town supervisor received a letter from the New York State DOT. Um, they have to make an emergency repair of a culvert on 292. Um, so that will be closed um, in the month of October um, to through traffic. Uh, between Holmes Road and Pauling Patterson Town line, I guess. Um, they're projecting four weeks to perform the replacement. Hallelujah, another road closed. Yeah, another road going that direction closed. But only four weeks. Motion to um, uh, accept the resolution for the renewal of the cable television franchise with Comcast of New York, LLC. 
I'd like to ask that the motion, uh, the resolution be read, um, entered. entered into the record as read. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Rich. Uh, also making an announcement that the uh, invitations to bid the snow uh, removal in the town and also in the uh, uh, sewer and water districts. That is out to bid. And I guess, so you'd like uh, to make a motion to accept the bids and ask that the town clerk advertise the bids? I'd like to make a motion that we accept the bid forms. Bid forms. Right. And ask the uh, town clerk to put a public notice. Out. So moved. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Sean. All righty. Uh, next up, we have a few requests from uh, Ed Foster, our um, highway superintendent. It's a request to order some vehicles. The vehicles are taking several years to place the order. So when you order these large uh, dump trucks, solar mobile vehicles, uh, two to three years lead time. So this is why we have a vehicle replacement policy. These are very expensive vehicles. The first is to order uh, the large dump plow trucks per the vehicle replacement policy. Mr. Foster is looking to order two of those vehicles. They are approximately $260,000 each. So make a motion we approve the ordering of those vehicles, uh, $520,000 for the two. They likely will not be in 2026. Hopefully. 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 Fingers crossed. Uh, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the other is for the sanitation department to order a new Packard truck. The current uh, one, uh, truck 110, is a 2010 vehicle. The amount of that replacement is $330,000. Uh, again, they have the money in the vehicle replacement policy, or vehicle replacement budget, so I'll make a motion we approve that request, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. If I could just add that um, for everybody here, this is one of the problems with going to electrification because of the limited number of vehicles. We ordered uh, two replacement trucks, and they were supposed to be delivered last July. We're hoping they're going to be delivered this December. And we ordered them a year before that. And that's because they they have to sell, um, I think it's one or two electric trucks, which nobody wants, for every eight um, regular diesel trucks they're selling. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, next item is very exciting. It has to do with our EMS building. I don't know if it's very exciting to you. It's exciting to me. Uh, the fact that we are moving now to the point of advertising for bids for the construction of our EMS building. This is for general construction, HVAC, plumbing, and electrical. I'd like to make a motion to approve the advertising of bids for these projects and ask the town clerk to advertise appropriately. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And lastly, from our uh, building department, we have a, one request for a refund. This was a um, rental property registration that was paid for $200 uh, when the person didn't realize they had just renewed last year. It's a three-year renewal. So we're looking to refund the full amount of the $200 to uh, North Realty Corp. Uh, 2693 Route 22. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you so much. I'd like to make a motion to advance payroll number 24 to Wednesday, November 27th, 2024. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. The town board has been working very hard this year on a preliminary budget uh, for the town of Patterson. Um, I'm, I'm ecstatic over where we are because I thought it was going to be actually much worse uh, based on some of the requests we, we have received in. Um, I will tell you the town kept the general operating costs and the highway costs down to around 2%, just over 2%. But there were a lot of other drivers in this budget. Um, both the uh, fire departments are seeking additional funding to keep up with the OSHA and uh, NFPA fire requirements. Uh, there were significant increases. Library is looking for an increase again this year, and the um, NYSEG bills are just 
out of control that are driving a lot of this. So um, in total, this year's uh, preliminary budget proposes a 3.8% increase, um, which I, again, I'm, I'm thrilled that we could get it to where we are at this point. There was a lot of saying no to a lot of individuals, um, and we wanted to do right by everybody. We also, you know, um, have a couple of contracts we had to negotiate which didn't hurt us as bad as we thought they were going to hurt us. So with that, I'd like to make a motion to approve the preliminary budget for 2025 and ask the town clerk to advertise it for the next meeting, which I believe we've already taken care of. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right, next on my agenda, uh, we've talked for a while about uh, fitting this room out with video monitors so we could project some of what we're looking at out to the audience and we could do that with the planning board as well. Um, it's been very challenging. I've talked to probably seven different firms um, about doing that, installing them, and out of the seven, I've gotten two estimates. And the board has the two estimates, I believe. One of them uh, proposes installing three monitors for $6,000 that we could tie into then. The other one uh, proposes not only a new audio system, but new video system and a whole lot of other bells and whistles, even though you know, I met with both individuals, gave them the same information. Uh, somehow, the second proposal we got, well, just for the, um, just for the audio, I think it was what, yeah, it's 24,000. The video was 17,000, and then a really state-of-the-art new system so we could record this and broadcast it out it was uh, 69,217. Uh, you know, at this point, my recommendation is we go with the $6,000 because, like I said, I've, I've contacted a number of firms. I've met with a number of contractors who do this work, and, I, you know, I just, they're not giving me proposals back. So I can keep looking. Hopefully, maybe we can get a better price, or we can just move ahead. What's your thoughts? I would say move ahead. Six is a lot better than 69. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so I'd like to make a motion to approve HB Infotech LLC to install three video monitors in the meeting room for a cost of $6,000. So second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I would like to add one item to my agenda and executive session uh, just very briefly uh, to consult with the town attorney on a legal matter. And I will defer that to the end of the agenda. Okay. Mary? Yep. So um, the fire department is would like to um, approve a, accept a member, sorry. <laughs> Lost my train of thought. So I have here a resolution in front of me for the Patterson Fire Department. They've accepted a new member, Julian Pettiford. So I'd like to uh, thank Julian for his or her interest and um, appreciate you joining on board. And I'd like to ask that this resolution be entered into the record as though read. And as Julian should be passed all physical and fitness tests required and move ahead with the um, accepting of the members. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, the other item is um, Matt, from Mr. Matt Chabarro from the Patterson Rec Center. He's announcing that they will be starting a uh, Red Bull tennis pilot program. For those of you who don't know what the Red Bull um, program is, because I didn't know what Red Bull was, I'm just gonna read a brief description of what Matt outlined here in his memo. Um, Matt says he's excited to announce this new program to be happening soon at the Rec Center with the assistance of the United States Professional Tennis Association and staff member Daria Pascal. Uh, for those of you who may know Daria, she's a uh, physical education teacher and a tennis coach for many years for Brewster Schools. Um, she did a wonderful job. And um, they are in the process of receiving a grant from the USTA for a Red Bull tennis pilot program. The grant consists of $800 worth of equipment, which includes rackets, nets, and Red Bull, red tennis balls. 
The equipment becomes the property of the town. Red tennis balls are slightly larger and than a standard tennis ball, but they are decompressed and bounce lower and more slowly. A red ball tennis court area is smaller than a regulation size tennis court. Um, he says to think maybe a pickle ball court size so you have an idea of what that would look like. The idea is to introduce new or beginner level players to the game. In addition to the equipment portion of the grant, the USTA will be providing $720 in grant money to the town for providing the pilot program. So um, with this program, he'll be able to offer red ball tennis clinics at the rec center for the town residents and community members of all ages and abilities during the months of November and December. In addition to the pop-up clinics for the public, he will be providing red ball tennis clinics to members of the ARC, Mid Hudson, a non-for-profit organization agency that serves Putnam County children with disabilities. The mission is to empower people with intellectual and other developmental disabilities to achieve and experience the highest quality of life. Um, so anyone that's interested, I would say um, go on their website and check out at patterson.my.myrec.com. Um, and if anyone's interested that they will not be charging any participant fees during this pilot program. So I'd like to make a motion to approve the new Red Bull Tennis Program for the Patterson Rec Center. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, also we have from Mr. Matt Chabarro is a shout out. Thank you to the Highway Department. Matt would like to express his sincere gratitude to Ed Foster, Gene Brandon, and the rest of the Highway Department crew who prepared the surface area behind the rec center for our pre-K play playground pieces. They did a fantastic job on the daunting project and I couldn't have expected a better result. I really appreciate their effort and assistance with making the, this project come to life. I'd also like to thank Margot Miller for coordinating all the action and last but not least, Supervisor Williams for his input and help with his endeavor. As always, thank you for your support. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Highway Department. Good Supervisor Williams. <laughs> Just a job. <laughs> Um, and lastly, the Putnam County Department of Health is having, uh, once again, a free rabies vaccine clinic that will be Saturday, November 2nd, 2024, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Veterans Memorial Park, the Upper Park, 201 Gypsy Trail Road in Carmel. Bring your pets, cats, dogs, and ferrets for a free rabies vaccine. Dogs must be leashed, cats and ferrets must be in carriers, and uh, no harnesses. Pets must be at least 12 weeks old. So if anyone's interested, there you go. Wanna catch that? Good? Sorry. Okay. okay. That's all I have. It's supposed to be a surprise for him, but I don't think well, he's not watching. No. Yeah. 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 So you want Did to I do miss that? something? Sure. No, no, I didn't miss anything. Um, so we want to also mention that uh, on Sunday at approximately 1 o'clock in the afternoon at the Veterans Memorial Park on Maple Avenue, we will be unveiling a, uh, a plaque um, to honor this group. Thankfully, this person is still alive. I hate when we do this after the fact. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Lowry, who has dedicated over 40 years to the town of Patterson at the park. And so this, uh, he's going to be honored on Sunday. His family is looking forward to bringing him here for this honor. And I think it's going to be a really beautiful tribute to a man who gave a lot of his life to the town of Patterson and the park specifically. So that will be at 1 o'clock on Sunday. I think it's at between 12 and 1, but probably yeah, closer, closer to, one. to 1. I think, yeah. So, thank you. Get okay. there early. Any board member have any other business they wish to bring up? All right, we'll open it up. Public recognition. Does anybody here from the public wish to? Uh, Discuss anything with the town board? I'm Dr. Pat Sutton. I'm here um, partly representing the Putnam Lake Park District. So, um, in response to the recent October 3rd open meeting of the board of the Putnam Lake Park District, I'm here to represent the board and viewpoints of the individuals of Putnam Lake who attended the meeting. The feedback regarding the new walking path is positive and many of us look forward to its completion. Considering the now existing path, the question concerning parking was raised. 
The Patterson Ordinance prohibits parking overnight and parking between November and April for snow emergency and removal and signs are posted for that. We're aware of that. The new concern is parking on the walk path itself or the need to drive over it to park along the side of the road on the lakeside. Um, there are several cars already parking on the new walking path. So the concern is that parking and driving on the path can be destructive to the path and also create an obstacle to pedestrians where safety was a concern for creating the path in the first place, or one of the concerns. So we propose that a resolution be put forth by the board to revise the current parking ordinance to accommodate the walking path and the needs of those who use it. So could there be no parking on the property surrounding the lake with no exceptions, or do we need to revise the current ordinance or adopt a new code to reflect Putnam Lake only and our needs? Thank you. You're welcome. The uh, local law that we're going to have to adopt to do that is already in the works. We're just waiting for the no parking signs to come in. As far as I know, they're not in yet. So. There'll be no parking at all. There'll be no parking on the, in the area of the bike path. We're going to have to figure out what we're going to do because there are areas where, you know, again, there's boat launches. People are going to need to park. So we're, we're still evaluating how we're going to handle that. And the code enforcer, I'm sorry, I'm not in here tonight, but it's a small room. So the code enforcer would be more visible to enforce that? Yes. Yes. So, and it's not a question of a small room, it's a question of the... Oh, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I live in a Zoom world and I do not yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, does anybody else have anything they wish to address the board on? I guess I have something nice to say that I think the construction that we are dealing with in both of these. Can you introduce cities, yourself, please? Yes, I'm sorry, Sonia Abby Taylor from McManus Road North in Patterson, and I drive all all the time uh, to 311, and I watch that construction. And while I'm dis I'm disturbed that it's it's blocking my way, making it is remarkable that they're doing the work. And the same thing with 292. I think we are lucky that that, that they're doing it. Uh, another highway related or road related um, a lot of the things that I've heard from from people that I've spoken to recently they've been so happy with their their lives in Patterson one of the things that they're concerned about though and I've heard this from from many people is that we have kids and teenagers and people riding on our roads that are small roads too fast and we have to figure out ways to slow them down and I know we've, we've you've dealt with budgets and I know you've talked about all of that but I'm wondering if we can't put signs, we can't put maybe stop signs or more of those things because of funding. But what about signs that say, drive as if these were your children on these roads. That the more that we connect people to things that they feel, that maybe that will have an impact. And maybe the teenagers on those roads will understand a little bit more. Because those accidents are preventable. And if we have something that, that alerts them to slow down, maybe that will help. But people are happy, and I think you need to continue what you're doing. Thank you. That's Thanks. a great so, suggestion. Sonia, if you'd like to actually write something up and email it to us or send it in, we'll take a look at it. Well, I was just going to say that I'm on the um, Putnam County Traffic Safety Board. So if you want to share that with me, and I'll get it on the agenda for a meeting. But if you have specific areas we would need that they would increase the, um, you know, the, the details on the road, the police to, to trap, you know, check on the speeds. Okay. One of, one of the signs that I don't see that many of left, but I, I think it might have been back when Bill Burdick was highway superintendent, it says, and I might get this wrong, please slow down, we have no children to spare, mm -hmm. or something yeah. along those lines. Yeah, exactly. and it and it's kind of pulls on your emotion that, you know, we, we need to be cognizant that this is our community and our children and, you know, protect and our own. That's exactly the point. Mm -hmm. And some of the roads are so you're going fast, and kids can jot out any yeah. moment, and we've been lucky. Um, but that's all it is. Yeah. So I'd be happy to write something up. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> uh, can I lower this a little bit? Sure, you can. Okay. Yeah. I got it. Hello, everybody. My name is John Pantanella. 
and I've lived at 15 Kenton Road in Patterson since 1989. It is adjacent to the town of Patterson Memorial Park in Putnam Lake. There's never been any water issues at my house before 2016. It was 27 years. Underground water from the park, including water from a drain pipe on the Haviland Drive, has flowed into a swale on the park property going north into a marshy area on the park property. In 2016, the town of Patterson constructed a basketball court about 20 feet from my property. The basketball court covered a court covered a large part of the marshy area that was accepting this flow of water. Immediately after that, the water started backing up and pooling on the park property, and in 2016, the town installed a four inch wide by eight foot long underground drain pipe in the attempt to mitigate this drainage changes caused by the construction of the basketball court. I don't believe any stormwater engineering went into the design and or the construction of that basketball court or any of the mitigation attempt. The eight foot long drain pipe was ina inadequate to manage this flow of water. Without the marshy area available to accept this water, the park's property next to me became oversaturated with water and water from the park migrated into my property. I became aware of this in October of 2023. My ground is so saturated with underground flow of water from the town's property that my septic infiltrators fill with this water when it rains. This water flows back into my septic tank, causing my tank to fill and requires excessive septic pumping. I notified Putnam County immediately when I became aware of this problem. The county investigated right away and determined that the water is not a county problem, but rather a town problem and the county notified the town formally. The town promptly investigated, promptly investigated. The Patterson Highway Department installed a 12 inch underground <laughs> drainage pipe to replace the four inch pipe and they redesigned the swale. And no storm, went, no storm water engineer was ever called in for these mitigation event, uh, efforts. The highway department's efforts did not solve the problem. Groundwater from the town property is still entering my property and it overwhelms my septic. I contacted the highway department in November. Ed and Jean came out and they assessed what was going on and they were willing to dig a, uh, a, a trench alongside the pipe that they just recently installed. But they weren't allowed to do that because the town supervisor, Rich Williams, brought the town engineer, Rich Renia, to assess the problem and that was in December. Rich Rennie has suggested digging test holes on the property for more information, and I agreed. That was in December. Finally, in April, the town dug a test hole and installed a test pipe. And no one has ever come out to collect any data from that pipe. There has been no further action from the town. That pipe is in the ground six months. No one's come out. No one's taken any, any measurements out of this pipe. I'm here asking once again for the town to solve the nuisance caused by the town's improper drainage that continues to damage my property. Looking for a solution, I'm asking you to do the right thing and fix your problem that was caused by failing, the by failing to adequately engineer the town's stormwater management issues from the construction of the basketball court. Please help me. John. We've tried everything we can to help you. We've expended considerable town resources to do that. One of the pipes that you're talking about we installed at our expense, at the town's expense, was to deal with a county drainage issue with the county water coming off of Haviland Drive. It's coming on the Had Haviland. nothing to do with the town. We've evaluated, we've had the town engineer out there. When? He was out there and he witnessed the deep holes. I have no idea what this Whoa. pipe is, but the town engineer did go out there. We had we hired Jimmy Gagliardo because we couldn't have the highway department do it, so we had to hire a private contractor to go on your property and dig test holes. And the report that came back said You had a you had someone We had a town engineer on your property. Your property at this point in time is falling yes. to the town. You had people come out there and dig test holes on your property. By, on my property. 
Yes. When? With your permission. Oh, oh, oh no, Rich. You're well, telling Jimmy Gang. Hold on, hold on, to... hold on, hold on. Let's back this up to 2016, when the first pipe went in there. When I brought you pictures of the water that was backing up, someone installed the pipe to possibly drain that water. That failed. Away from your house, and hold the pipe on. is still there, and it is still working fine. What? No, it's not. John, we've been going through this. At this point, I think we're at loggerheads. I think if you can get an engineering report showing that the town is responsible. Okay, hold on. Because hold on. I adamantly refute what you're saying that the town has taken any action to adversely affect your property. Well, it's not true. Uh, and you right. keep maintaining it, and I disagree with you. Well, I'm glad that you disagree with me now because I never wanted to go where I'm going to go with this. Okay. Okay. The pipe that was put in in 2016 failed to do what it was intended to do. Water continuously started to build up and build up and build up. It found a new, new direction. That new direction is coming right through my property. I went to the county, the county came out, they looked, they asked me, what happened here? I said, the town built the basketball court. They dug up a 145 foot long by 80 foot wooded lot, completely gutted it, took all the root bowls out, took all the big 20 foot round boulders out, backfilled it and the water started building up. The guy said to me, this is not a county problem. This is a town problem, and I will get them out here for you. And that's exactly what happened. The town the, did come out. Eddie Jean came out. I went to the county on October 11th, okay? The next day, Ed and Jean come to my house. I showed them the two spots of water that the, where, where the water's backing up, right where the pictures were that I gave you, and where the swale pipe came out, where the water came out of the pipe that's underneath Tavlin Drive that used to go north was no longer able to go north because the swale was completely compromised. So that water started building up right by the pipe. Okay? Ed looked at it. Gene looked at it. He says, we'll get back to you. The next day, Friday, Ed comes out with you. You and Ed come out. You get out. You get out. You walked around. You looked. Everything is okay. You looked over here. You looked over there. You left. That was a Friday. Saturday, you called me up. And asked me, John, I need a release because I need someone to come out on the property. We're going to dig this up. We're going to take care of this. No problem. Fine. Absolutely. You sent the, you sent the release to me. I, I faxed it right back to you. I shipped it right back to you. You said they were going to come out on October 17th. Okay? Yeah. That's a true story. That is an absolute true story. Now, the county on high, October the county 17th, let me finish. On John, October you need to calm down a little bit. Though. I That's am not calm. appropriate. Be, you're the right. way you're speaking is I apologize. Thank you. I apologize. On October 17th, the highway department came out. Tons of equipment. Trucks. Uh, bucket trucks. Chainsaws. Five, six, seven guys. They started ripping everything apart. It was magnificent what they were doing. Out of all the equipment they brought there, they failed to bring Rich Renia. The town's engineer was nowhere to be found on October 17th to help advise the Patterson Highway Department on how to handle this massive water problem. The town's highway department started digging and taking out things that they needed to take out. Brush, foliage, trees, the four-inch pipe that was in the ground, and they're digging water. Ed, the acting supervisor at that moment, he shows up, and I am personally personally involved with two conversations with Ed, the acting supervisor, Gene, the foreman, who's operating the, the back of the excavator, and Stephen, who's thigh deep in water. Ed says to Gene, what's our plan? What are we doing here? What do you need? Gene informs him, I'm going to need three or four lengths of pipe. I'm going to have to swap out this pre-existing basin because it's too shallow. The inlet pipe that's here is too shallow. I need to get this pipe deeper into the ground. And I'm going to need three, three, two or three, maybe four truckloads of gravel. That'll get me through. Ed's response to Gene was, I cannot at this time physically make that decision. I have to go and speak to my boss. He leaves and he tells Gene, Continue digging this up and let's get this all set up here. A few hours later, once again, I'm personally involved with this conversation. Ed comes over and grabs Gene and Steven and I said to him, how are we doing? And he said to me, I can get, he said to Gene, I can get you all the pipe you need. 
I can get the Y fitting that you need, and I can get all the gravity that you need. But my boss has instructed me to tell you under no certain circumstances are we to exchange that existing basin that's here. Because if we take that basin out, we're going to have to readjust the entire, the, the entire outlet to it. And he's not going to do that. And I said, I said, Gene, but you need to go deeper in the ground. He says, John, I have to do as I am instructed. I want to know who was Ed's boss that day that gave him that directive. I have no idea. You have no idea who Ed went and left that property to go find out what needed to be done there because he was the acting supervisor and he was unable to make that decision on his own. He went and asked his boss what we're going to do here. And obviously when he came back, his boss told him on the note, certain circumstances are you to exchange this existing basin that's here. You have to work what's, be, what's here. That right there caused the entire highway department to abandon the idea that they had to go deeper into the ground and put a brand new uh, uh, pipe in the same exact spot and depth that failed in 2016. And not only that, that pipe ran now 85 feet. The further that pipe went out, the higher it came up out of the ground because you start at the lower end and you go to the higher end. And by the time that pipe reached the water by the, by the, second, the second disturbance of water that's coming out from underneath Havilah and Drive, that pipe went clearly right over it, went right over that water. And I have a video in my pocket that I would like to show everyone up there exactly what happened. I have waited 11 months for this to be fixed. I've been very calm, I've been very patient, You've tried a couple of times to do this. Can I come up there and show you this video? Sure, absolutely. Okay, this video was taken on the 19th. Of what month? October. It's 12 seconds. But it will give you the impact of what hit. What you're going to see now is Gene is on the machine. He's up towards Kenton Road right where the county pipe comes on the Cavill and Drive, and they hit, you can, you can start it when you want. Start it when you want. It's four and a half feet down in the ground. Can you yell this out, what did I break, the water main? Where is this water coming from? You see the water bleeding out of the side of the ground? Repeat it again, a couple of times. That is on the, is the, the night jump, and then two for that. That's an immense amount of water, four and a half feet down. By the time that Gene and Stephen got the gravel needed to fill that hole, to make the foundation of the curtain drain pipe that was there, the water vanished because the water's going right through the gravel. That pocket, that pocket of water is exactly 35 feet from my first infiltrator. 35 feet. That was at 1.20 in the afternoon. They got the gravel in, they pulled it for the day. When they came back Friday the next day, all there was was gravel. They had no <coughs> choice but to put that pipe right over dry gravel. They covered it like they were supposed to. They did an excellent job. Gene, Ed, and their crew of, uh, from the highway department are fantastic people. They're intelligent people. They know what they were doing. But someone changed the course of action. They wanted to go substantially deeper in the ground, and they were not allowed to do that. And I'm suffering from this. Now, Rich Rennie was finally brought out there. Mr. Williams brought Rich Rennie out there, and he decided so I could just send back, back to the, mic. the microphone so that we can get well, you on record. Well, now that I'm here, this video is on January 11th. It's after a rainstorm. Mr. Rennier was out there on the 27th, and he suggested the test hole be done. This is the 11th. This is less than two weeks from that. This is a, a, a video of my distribution box. 
and you'll see me take the cap off. This is a four minute video. <coughs> and I want you to see what I've been going through with the water that's coming underneath that pipe and that's still destroying my yard. Four minutes, enjoy. <coughs> that goes to the first infiltrator mm -hmm. that's 35 feet from the water that's coming in underneath the pipe that the town put in. It goes right underneath that, it goes 35 feet, it hits that infiltrator, that infiltrator floods my distribution box out, floods my tank out. I'm not here to get anyone in trouble, I'm not here to embarrass anybody, I'm here to help. I need somebody to come out there and finally fix this correctly. Please help me, please. I don't know what else to say. There's the problem. The pipe did not do what it was intended to do because somebody intervened with the highway department's original design. Rich Rennie was never brought out there to assess the highway department to fix this correctly. It was never. So, John, the issue was that the county. So, where we started really getting involved in this is the county drainage was discharging into a swale that was supposed to go around and and it didn't and the whole thing failed the Why county did drainage fail? Why because did it fail, because Rich? the county never maintained it Rich, over time no that's not the reason it failed that's exactly the reason no, it the failed reason that's failed why we went there was no I, there was no stormwater in mitigation done when you built a basketball court no one realized what was going on here hank John, didn't the want to realize what was going on here the pipe isn't near the basketball court number one number two when the basketball you court you just when the, the basket near the basketball court, it's not the pipe comes out and follows the swell the water's on the swell the swell goes to where the basketball court was it used to do it did it for 27 years rich i never had a water problem until you backfill that property john the best listen i will provide you again the engineering report that rich rennie did when when he went out there when he went out there this with jimmy gags fact the Rich Rennie report, how did, first of all, how did he get a report? No one ever came John, can you step back to the mic? Wait, grab your phone, though. Your phone. Yeah, grab your how phone. How did Rich Rennie write a report when no one came out to that white pipe that you put into the ground? I don't, I'm not sure what white pipe you're talking about other than the pipe for the curtain drain. No, no, the pipe. So what white pipe are we talking? John, Mike. In November, when I called the highway department up to notify them that water is still getting past their curtain drain that they installed, Ed and Jean came to my property the next day and said they were going to dig a trench right alongside the pipe that they just recently installed. But he said, Ed said to me one more time, I have to go clear this with my boss. Gene said, I'd like to be out here tomorrow with my backhoe and we'll see if water's getting by this pipe that we just put into the ground 10 days earlier. I get a phone call from Ed and Ed says to me, John, Rich is not letting us do that. Rich is going to bring the town engineer out here now and he's gonna wanna assess what's going on here. That's the first time that Mr. Rich Rennier was ever, ever involved and brought to this water problem ever. Agreed. Okay. It took this town from the first week of November to December 27th to get Mr. Rich Rennie out there. And on that day, the three of us walked all around to figuring out what we can possibly try and do to get another curtain drain alongside that one and run the water to Kenton Road and then down Kenton Road into the basin at the bottom. On that day, the 27th, Rich Raniette suggested that he wanted pipes put into the ground. It took this town boy, and actually this is a wrong statement. I called up Rich Rennie. I called up Gagliardo, and I set that appointment up for, uh, for April 17th because no one from the town contacted Rich Rennie 
and had anybody put that white pipe in the ground as a test pipe to ter determine water levels in the ground. I had to do that. It took four months to that to happen. So now that that white pipe that Rich Rainey has so desired in the ground is eight feet down into the ground and it's sticking up this much out of the ground, that was there so he could take water levels to determine what's happening if, every time it rains. No one, no one has ever come to that pipe to take any water levels out of that pipe except for me. Now, John, that's their six months, Mr. Williams. Six months. Yes, no one John, did anything about it. Because when we were out there with Mr. Renia, we agreed you were going to get a hold of Jimmy Gags. He was going to dig a test pit, and then Rich Renia was going to be notified, and he was going to go out there. The months went by. No, I, I kept You on never the... contacted Jimmy Gagliardo. Yes, I did. I called because him constantly. Because I contacted Jimmy no, Gagliardo. Did you pay Jimmy Gagliardo's bill? No, you did. You're damn right I did. That's right. You That's did. right. Because I, I finally didn't wait anymore. They, John, no, I've no, tried, Rich, don't, no, don't turn I've this I've tried around. to help you on this. Don't it, turn. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. John, I think, I right, think at this point. I think at this point. Answer me one more question. You need to tell me who's Ed, who was Ed's boss on October 17th that gave him that direction. John, I don't know who. who I don't who's believe Ed. that. Okay, well then you don't believe that, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a recommendation right now on how to deal with this. Go hire an engineer, and if you your engineer comes back and says the town is at some fault liable, then we'll have our engineer review it. Rich, and we'll see what I, we can work I'm out. Not, but I'm, I'm telling you, it's I'm... not the tennis court that's doing this because we put in stormwater drainage when we put the tennis court in. We tried what to correct it. We tried to correct it, but nothing, you did nothing, not. you nothing did satisfies not. you. No, yes, nothing. Every, yeah, every, you know what would right? satisfied so, me? So the what problem would have satisfied is, me, what would have satisfied me was on October 17th that the town engineer, Rich Renio, was present on the day of the, the, yeah. the, of the repair right. of that drain. So no but, one brought Mr. The, Reddy a there. No, you no know what one. the problem is here, John? And I'm gonna be completely blunt with you. The problem is you put infiltrators in, in an area with high groundwater. That's, that's, yes, that's, that's, that's a exactly lie. what the problem that's is. That's a lie. And you didn't put in curtain drains. That's a lie. Yes, because that's a lie. October, that's you didn't put curtains, you, you wanna know something? You didn't put infiltrators in. Hold on. In 2011, that, that uh, the Department of Health came to my property and dug my entire front lawn up. And they said, I can't believe how dry this product is here. Yeah. This is fantastic. I was thinking about having to put a pop-up system here. But Mr. Panzanella, we're not going to do that for you. We're going to design a set of infiltrators here because that's what we're going to do. I didn't put them in there. The County Board of Health came in and they decided to do that because I had no water in my... No water in my yard for 27 years. But the water getting into your septic the system water that came, is coming from groundwater. And where's the ground? How did the groundwater start coming from my yard? It never came from my yard for 27 years, Rich. The only one variable that is different is you destructed the groundwater drainage when you built the basketball court. You dug if we everything did, up. You took all the footballs out. You took all the rocks out of it. You backfilled it. The water immediately started coming up. So That's when, what happened. So, John, when, you, when you pave when you pave an area, That's what happened. when you pave an area, you reduce the groundwater. You don't increase the groundwater. Rich, you, it's now all surface runoff. You disrupted a groundwater I disagree with you, John. That's been working for 27 I, I, years. John, I've tried to you help you out with this as best I can. That's what you did. I think we're done. That's, no, we're not done. Yes. You still need yes, to we tell are me, done. You need to tell me who Zed's boss was. I don't have to tell, tell you anything, that. John. I'm yes, telling you, do. we're done. No, we're not. I appreciate your being no, here. No, no. I express your, I'm your gonna concern. I'm going to tell you Ed's boss that day was you. You can think anything you want. I'm gonna, Maybe I, it was. I, rest, I can't I tell assured, you. I rest assured that Ed spoke to you and you said, we're not changing that basic. And it doesn't. The part to and John, it doesn't change the fact that the issue that I've tried to help you out with spent a lot of town money on right. is not a town problem. Yes, it is. It's a personal problem. It's not a personal problem. And I've problem. tried to help you out. It was created by the town. It was not created yes, by the it town. It, it absolutely was not. You spent $80,000 to build a basketball court, and you right. put zero amount of money in the in the groundwater destruction that you did. John, you at this point, we're going we're gonna to agree to disagree. I think we've been around this you know, several times, and I'm going to ask you to have a seat, and we're going to move on. 
I get what you're saying. Okay. Does anybody else here wish you to address the board the tonight? You created the problem. I did not create the problem. Yes, you did. Yeah. And you didn't fix the problem. No. Because the video <laughs> clearly shows that the water's going right underneath the pipe that you put in the ground. Okay, John. Does anybody else here wish to address the board? George. George, how are you? A little uncomfortable. <laughs> How's the library, George? Okay, I'll just tell you. You need help? No, I'm good. You got help. <laughs> um, George Disro, Patterson Reddison, Tammany Hall Road, uh, representing the library. Let's have a few programs that we have, and then after that, uh, I have a couple of comments as a resident. Um, <coughs> the friends of the library are doing, uh, they're having a program starring Ellen Foley. <coughs> Ellen Foley is a <coughs> TV actress, singer, and uh, Broadway star. You've probably seen her on uh, Tootsie, Cocktail, Fatal Attraction. She starred in Hair on Broadway. What you probably will best remember her for is that she sang with Meatloaf <coughs> on Paradise by the <coughs> Board Lights. That brings back any memories. Uh, second program that we have, and by the way, the next three programs uh, anytime the library has a program uh, that doesn't require a registration fee, uh, Patterson residents are given preference. So there's a period of time that we leave it open just for Patterson residents and then fill in the rest. So we do have uh, the Patterson Historical Society is presenting Daniel Nimhan, a free Indian, uh, Wappingers, uh, a uh, Dr. James Merrill, professor of history, <laughs> Uh, Emeritus from Vassar <coughs> College is coming to do a presentation, and that is on uh, October 17th at 6.30. Uh, we know that we have a holiday coming up at the end of the month, Halloween, and along those lines, uh, Jonathan Crook is coming on Thursday, October 24th, <coughs> to talk about the legends <coughs> of Sleepy Hollow. And the little teaser is uh, Sleepy Hollow, legends or truth. Come listen and decide for yourself. And the last one that I have here, uh, in November and in December, we have significant holidays, uh, uh, Hanukkah, uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving. So in November, the good folks from Blue Olive are coming over and they're gonna be doing a uh, yeah, November 7th, it's a Thursday at 6.30 p.m. And they're going to be doing uh, a nice program about how to showcase how to prepare mouth-watering holiday dishes, obviously using their products. <laughs> so, that's from the library. Um, as a resident of Patterson, I, I have two comments. I'm hoping this is gonna go over well. Uh, last night I had the uh, Last night, I, I attended a County Board of Legislators uh, meeting, their rules committee about budget. As a three hours, I'll never get back in my life. And what I wanted to say as a Patterson resident, after coming to so many of the meetings here, although there may be differences among the town board members, everybody is treated with respect. There's a sense of decorum. And last night really brought that to my attention. So I, uh, I, I'm proud as, as a resident that our town board, despite any differences, finds a way to conduct themselves in a very nice way. The second thing, and the most important thing for this evening, I'm just so happy to see Councillor Don Rossi back. I haven't seen him in a long time. Nice to see you, Councillor, and I thank you very much for your time. Well, thank you very thank much, you, George. George. That must have been some meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else video that meeting. here tonight? Seeing nobody standing up, we'll turn to our audience joining us by Zoom. If any member joining us by Zoom wishes to make any comments or ask any questions of the town board, if you would unmute and give your name for the record. Motion to go into executive session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. Oh. Oh. Bye. Oh. All right, Grace Beach, uh, Road I just wanted to ask. Um, if there was any update on the noise ordinance, if there's any that we're going to update it, that would be enforceable, and I don't know if there were any updates on that. 
No, not as, not as of yet. I haven't finished writing it up. Okay, is there um, a time frame to when that's supposed to happen? Um, there is not a time frame. I don't want to mislead you. Uh, certainly, certainly it is. I recognize the, uh, you know, the importance of getting it done. Uh, but a couple of things have uh, distracted me. One is the EMS building, and the other is uh, trying to get the water line in Front Street, which are definitely priorities for this board. And the budget. And the budget. Okay. Yeah, and the budget. Okay. So. Well, keep coming back then. Thank yeah. you. Please, please do. Anyone else? The motion to go into executive session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you all for coming.